Well, good morning and welcome to this service, this uh, Sunday morning online at SPSJ. It's great to have you joining with us this morning, wherever and whenever you're watching, whenever you're joining us as well. Uh, I'm, as you can see, I'm outside at St. James at the back and uh, you might be able to see some of the eco garden that's been, uh, as I kind of swing, swing the camera around, the eco garden that's been uh, progressing really well and uh, there's one there's one more session one more time of uh, a working party and that's on Wednesday so it was meant to be last Wednesday um, but now it's, it's this coming Wednesday the weather's meant to be beautiful so do come and join us at three o'clock at St James and get involved as you can hear uh, there's some birds the weather is is wonderful here uh, this morning so I hope that you're really enjoying the weather at the moment maybe you've been able to get out and uh, enjoy some of of God's wonderful creation this week and uh, in the in the week ahead as well the weather is looking great as well and uh, as we come to worship this morning uh, we're going to be thinking about uh, the next the next part of our series of frontline Sundays so looking at whatever we do so we've we've thought about different places different things that we can do on our front lines whether that's our our workplace whether that's in, in school, college, at home, uh, our football club, whatever it might be. Uh, but this morning we're thinking about whatever we do and the work of our hands, however small or insignificant we might think they are, that they all matter to God. They're all part of our worship and can be used as part of growing his kingdom. So that's what we're going to be thinking about. And uh, we're going to have Val coming to speak to us uh, shortly and sharing from God's word on that. Uh, but before we do that, let's have our, our Bible reading and turn with me to Colossians chapter 3. So Colossians chapter 3 from verse 12. And it reads this. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through Psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. As I said, Val's going to be coming and speaking to us, helping us think through that passage and what that means for us on our front line shortly. But before I hand over to her, we're going to have a little video getting us to start thinking about uh, what are the things that we do in our front lines. Father, help me do good today. I want to shape this place to your design. Help me see the value my work has to you. May I model your kindness and patience. So that you are recognised. Yeah, <laughs> May they know Jesus through my presence. May they see your light as I share mine. Give me your joy and self-control. So that your warmth touches those I meet. Help me to be generous. Quick to put others first. Sharing clearly your love and grace. Give me words to speak about you and courage to stand for justice and truth. Whatever the day brings, in my humanity, weakness, breakthrough, let my life overflow with you.
Well, before we hand over to Val, a few notices of what's coming up this week. Um, don't forget we've got the continuation of our Lent Bible study groups. If you haven't been to any yet, don't worry, you can still come along and join in. And uh, as we continue to think about front lines and reflecting on the services. So that's Tuesday evening at St. James. So here behind me, down on Green Street, and that's from half past seven. And then the same thing, but at St. Peter's Church uh, during the day, that's Thursday morning from 11.30 a.m. So do come and join, bring lunch with you if you come uh, to St. Peter's on Thursday morning. You might not want to bring lunch with you if you're at St. James on uh, Tuesday evening, but do get involved, do come along. We'd love to see you uh, along to one of those. As well as that, on Wednesday evening, we've got the next um, event as part of the NAVE where we're going to be having a pizza and games evening. So do come along to that. It's open to everyone. Uh, so not just students, not just young people, um, but anyone uh, in the community, anyone in the church family as well. So do come along, do invite people along to that. So that's uh, bring your board games. I know Don likes to play a bit of chess. So do, do come along and, uh, and get involved. As well as that, Wednesday afternoon, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we've got the next uh, working party, the last working party uh, for the time being in this eco garden. So think about moving, we're gonna be moving some soil and things around in the, in the big planters, one that I'm sitting on currently at the moment. They're great. Um, so do get in touch with Luke if you're interested in that and you want to get involved. Um, it'd be great to see you and come out and enjoy the weather. You get a tan at the same time, what more could you want? But uh, yeah, if you also, if you want prayer during the week, do, uh, do drop us a message um, either at office at spsj.org.uk. You can email any of our staff team individually as well, um, or there's forms and things uh, through the website. So if you, if you would like prayer for anything, whatever it might be, uh, small or big, or if it's for, for someone that's not known to the church family, do get in touch. We'd love to be praying for you and supporting you as well. But for now, I'm going to hand over to Val. Let's pray for her as she brings us God's word. Father God, we thank you uh, for the different places you've put us in our front lines, whether it's at work, whether it's at home, at school, at college, at sports clubs, uh, wherever we might be, walking down the high street. Help us to remember that whatever we do, that it's all for you. And this passage in Colossians, it's full of so much uh, rich goodness uh, that we can learn from. We pray for Val as she brings uh, your word to us this morning now, that you would speak through her, that you would challenge us, that you would change us and mould us and shape us into the people you want us to be. So may we learn something, may we hear from you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So here's Val. Have a wonderful week and take care. God bless you all. Good morning, it's good to be with you. I, I want to start by talking about prayer because I don't know about you, but I find praying in a crisis is really hard and it's been hard over the last couple of years. And now with such dev devastating news and images of war, what can we do? How can we pray? We lift the situation to God, pleading where we know what to plead for, but also trusting that God knows much more than we do and cares more than we could ever care, and actually has rescue and justice and plans for good for each person. We can't work out what that could possibly mean. What could it mean for Putin? God knows, and we can trust him. We are called to pray, to have no anxiety, and to bring everything to God in prayer. And the peace of God that passes understanding, that miraculous supernatural peace of God, keeps our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of Jesus Christ. So we learn to face everything with faith that brings peace. When there are no words, what do we pray? Well, I, I heard a few years ago that whatever is a good prayer, a good prayer to start the day, whatever, whatever you bring God. And it trusts God with everything. But I, I know that at the end of the day, sometimes you might often be saying, ah, oh, well, it didn't turn out quite how we thought. Whatever, ah, oh, well, peace. The reading today starts with, let the peace that comes from Christ 
rule in your hearts. And it sets the expectation for us that Jesus' peace should overrule anything that's in our heart, whatever's happening, however ugly, however unjust. And not only should we have peace, but Paul says, whatever is happening, be thankful. Well, I think that's really hard, really hard. Impossible, is it, for families in Kiev? What is there to be thankful for? Well, maybe it is possible when we find an eternal perspective. Because actually nothing is going to be perfect in this life. But God's perfect plan invited us into heaven to live in eternity when there's no more fear or injustice. We read in, in Revelation 21 verse 4, there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. We can look forward to all these things being gone forever. When everything else is rubbish and destroyed, this is still our truth. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, we can always be thankful. And it's this message about Christ in verse 16 that Paul says needs to fill our lives with all its richness. Do you get it? Do you get what it means for you? To fill our heart with that richness, the richness of the eternal plan and gift that God's given us? Do we get it? Have we got that? Because it's only through this frame of mind that we'll be able to be a representative of Christ. Whatever happens, whatever we say, whatever we do, in any circumstance, in any relationship, most of the people in this Colossian church would have been slaves or slave owners. In what he says, Paul absolutely flips this ownership relationship by showing us that we're not working for each other. We're all working for the Lord Jesus. He is our Lord. We belong to him. We serve him. We're committed to serving in any circumstance. And if our mindset is on the reality of what Jesus has done for us and what our eternal destiny involves, then we naturally overflow with joy and thanks, actually overflow with the love that the Holy Spirit keeps pouring into our personal, individual life. Our mindset is key to any of the instructions Paul gives. We can't get these relationships he's talking about right in our own strength. We can try, but it won't work. It won't be sincere. Verse 23, we, we read, we serve sincerely because of our reverent love for the Lord. Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and the master you are serving is Christ. When we carry the grace and love of Jesus like this, then Jesus can be seen in us and he is able to reveal himself to the people we meet. Every meeting, can become a touching point with Jesus, however brief, where we carry Jesus into each situation and relationship. It becomes a touching point. And because of this, whatever we do in any part of our lives is significant to God, no matter how humble it is. In God's economy, it's a vital part of the plan. And each one of us is a vital part of the body. Now, a few months ago, a vital part of my body, a tiny little bit of it, never seen, it was the aortic valve in my heart. It failed, it stopped working, and, and I wasn't going to live. But, I mean, thankfully for me, the clever doctors, very clever doctors and scientists had grown pig valves that fit into a human heart and was, 
one was put in that was exactly the right size for my heart and here I am to tell the tale. But so for us as the body of Christ in this bit of Christ's worldwide church, each one of us might feel totally insignificant, but we are all vitally important. We think we, we're not visible, we're insignificant, we've got nothing that's important to do or give, but we are vital. So our, our church work and our relationships in church are vitally important. They fall into the whatever you do in verse 15. And as members of one body, we're called to live in peace. Is that word peace again? Whatever we do, whatever we do, whether it's in our everyday lives at work, in school, shopping, with our family, watching TV, cleaning, cooking, resting, mending the car, or whether it's gathered here, as we are now, gathered for worship, it all matters. It shows God how thankful we are for saving us and being in our lives. It grows the kingdom of God and it reveals Jesus to one another, to the people we meet. Get it? Yeah, I've got it. <laughs>